Hello. In this review, we'll talk about the Soviet, and later Russian, air-to-air -air missile R-37. This missile emerged as another product of the Cold War, and due to the end of that very Cold War, along with the collapse of the Soviet Union, it became part of Russia's military legacy. Today, it is considered one of the best in its class in terms of target engagement range, or at the very least, it stands on the same level as American, European, and Chinese air-to-air -air missiles. I'll cover the history of the R-37's development, why the original version was never put into service, what improvements were made, and what capabilities this missile has overall. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click like, it helps make our content better. Let's burn! To understand why the Soviet Union needed to develop a missile like the R-37, we need to look at several other developments, both American and Soviet. In the 1970s, the Soviet Union was working on two major projects relevant to this topic. One of them was the MiG-31 interceptor, designed to counter cruise missiles, airborne early warning aircraft, bombers, and reconnaissance planes. It was equipped with the advanced Zaslan radar system, which allowed it to detect aerial targets at distances of up to 300 kilometers and track them beyond 100 kilometers. A fighter like this required a new air-to-air -air missile, not only to engage cruise missile carriers before they reached their optimal launch zones but also to destroy cruise missiles that had already been launched toward the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, in the 1960s, the United States was developing a long-range air-to-air missile, the AIM-54 Phoenix, which entered service in the 1970s. It was capable of engaging airborne targets, including fighters, cruise missiles, and other aircraft. At distances exceeding 100 miles, it's approximately over 150 kilometers. The Soviet Union sought to create a similar missile in the same class, specifically tailored for its new interceptor. The task of developing this missile was assigned to the Vimpel Design Bureau, which ultimately resulted in the R-33 missile, adopted in 1981 alongside the MiG-31. The R-33 could intercept aerial targets at ranges of 100 to 120 kilometers. If you compare the AIM-54 Phoenix and the R-33 visually, you'll notice many similarities, at least in their external appearance. Some believe the Soviets simply copied the American missile, drawing parallels with the idea that the Su-24 was allegedly copied from the F-111. Reviews of both the Su-24 and the F-111 are available on the channel. Links are in the description for those who haven't seen them. However, I'll discuss these nuances in more detail in the R-33 review. For now, the key point is that the Soviet Union had developed both a new interceptor and a new long-range air-to-air missile. The threat of nuclear war, along with the potential use of American airborne early warning aircraft like the E-2 Hawkeye and bombers such as the B-52 Stratofortress, which could carry nuclear bombs and cruise missiles, necessitated the creation of a missile capable of engaging airborne targets at even greater distances than the R-33. Almost immediately after the MiG-31 entered service, plans for its further modernization were introduced. This led to the development of the MiG-31M variant, featuring an improved radar system and other upgraded components that allowed for the use of advanced weaponry. I won't go into too much detail about the MiG-31 here, but it's worth noting that this version could detect targets at distances exceeding 300 kilometers. Alongside the fighter's modernization, work began on developing a new air-to-air -air missile based on the R-33. In 1983, the Vimpel Design Bureau, the same team behind the R-33, began developing this new missile. Meanwhile, the US had its own competing project in the same class, the AIM-120M ROM, which entered service in 1991. Aware of the American development, the Soviet Union sought to speed up its own project, but the process wasn't fast. The new missile, initially designated as Product 610 and later named the R-37, had its first flight tests in 1988. Testing continued for two years, focusing on the missile's secret performance, mid-course guidance system, and overall flight characteristics. The missile seeker was developed by the Agate Research Institute, but a significant challenge arose. Many of Vimpel's key manufacturing facilities were located in Ukraine, including the production of seeker heads. This wasn't just the case for the R-37 but also for surface-to-air missiles, a point I've covered in previous reviews. Later, this would play a crucial role in the R-37's history. It's important to note that the R-37 was primarily designed to engage heavy, slow-moving, and less maneuverable aircraft. It was not initially intended for targeting agile fighter jets performing high-G maneuvers, which was evident from its guidance system. 
However, the R-37's biggest issue was its timing. The missile's development peaked just as the Soviet Union was collapsing. On one hand, the need for such a missile diminished. After all, the likelihood of a nuclear war had significantly decreased. On the other hand, funding for further development and testing was also scarce. Despite this, work on the missile continued, but at a much slower pace. A prototype of the R-37 was first publicly displayed in 1992 at the Machulishchi Air Base near Minsk, alongside the MiG-31M. Of course, competition with the US continued, and 1994 became a milestone year. During testing, the R-37 missile successfully hit an airborne target at a range of 304 kilometers. At the time, no other missile in this class could boast such a performance. This achievement signaled that Russia had taken the lead over the US in developing a long-range air-to-air missile. The launch was conducted from a MiG-31M, making it a significant event for the aircraft as well. However, this success was premature, partly because, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Ukraine and Russia became separate countries. As a result, the Ukrainian factories that produced the seeker heads designed by Vampel could no longer supply them to Russia. Instead, Russia would have to buy them, something it was unwilling to do. This meant establishing domestic production and using local components, which required additional time and resources. Financial problems persisted, further delaying progress. For the general public, the R-37 missile was officially showcased at an exhibition in 1997, alongside the MiG-31M. However, it was still far from being operationally ready. Financial difficulties had impacted the project, just as they had affected the MiG-31M program. Neither the R-37 missile nor the MiG-31M ever entered mass production. Meanwhile, in the early 2000s, the European consortium MBDA began developing the Meteor air-to-air -air missile, which would later stand alongside the R-37, AIM-120, and in more recent history, China's PL-15. In 1998, a further upgrade of the MiG-31 emerged, the MiG-31BM. It was equipped with the improved Zislan AM radar, capable of detecting targets at distances of up to 320 kilometers. It's worth noting that the maximum detection range depends on the size of the target. Later, the MiG-31BM would become the first platform to carry the R-37 missile, but not the original version. This is an important detail to keep in mind when considering the missile's operational use. At the turn of the 21st century, the R-37 missile program was saved by India. India expressed interest in acquiring the missile and, according to some reports, even helped fund its further development. As a result, work began on an improved version, the R-37M. The goal was to enhance its internal components, seeker head, and engine, all of which would increase its range and accuracy. Additionally, work was undertaken on an export version of the missile, designated RVVBD, which stands for Long Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. In 2007, it was officially announced that development of the improved version was ongoing. To get a complete picture, two other projects need to be mentioned. First, during the 1990s, Russia worked on the KS-172 missile, which was intended to surpass the R-37. Specifically, it was designed to engage airborne targets at a range of up to 400 kilometers. However, it was never adopted into service and remained a conceptual project, one that still lingers as a topic of discussion today. Second, there is another long-range air-to-air missile used for engaging agile fighter jets and attack aircraft at distances over 100 kilometers, the R-77. Also developed by Vampel, it entered service in 1994 as the Russian counterpart to the American AIM-120 AMRAM. By the late 2000s, R-37M testing was still underway, primarily with an eye toward exports. The initial plan was to complete testing by 2011 and officially introduce the missile into service. However, the process dragged on for several more years due to necessary refinements in the guidance system. Ultimately, the R-37M long-range air-to-air missile was officially adopted in 2014. The same year, the export version, RVVBD, was declared ready for international sales. The MiG-31BM became the primary carrier of these missiles. Later, test launches were conducted from the Su-35S, which also became an official platform for the R-37M. Eventually, the Su-57 followed suit as another carrier of the missile. As for combat use, the R-37M saw active deployment starting in 2022 during the military conflict between Russia and Ukraine. 
Reports indicated that several Ukrainian MiGs and Suhoys were shot down during air battles. That concludes the complex history of the R-37. Now, let's take a closer look at what both versions of the missile have to offer. The R-37 missile is designed with a conventional aerodynamic layout. It features X-shaped elongated stabilizers located at the center of the body, while X-shaped aerodynamic control surfaces are positioned at the rear. The missile is equipped with an active semi-active 9B1388 seeker head, capable of locking onto targets at a range of up to 40 kilometers in the terminal phase of flight. During the cruise phase, the missile relies on an inertial navigation system. Additionally, mid-course guidance corrections can be provided by the carrier aircraft via radio commands, but only within a range of up to 100 kilometers. Both the base R-37 and the improved R-37M versions are capable of engaging targets at a distance of up to 300 kilometers. The missile weighs 600 kilograms, with a length of 4.2 meters and a diameter of 380 millimeters. It carries a 60 kilograms fragmentation explosive warhead, featuring both contact and proximity fuses. A two-stage solid propellant rocket motor powers the missile, allowing it to reach a maximum speed of Mach 6, approximately 7,350 kilometers per hour. The missile can engage targets flying at altitudes ranging from as low as 15 meters up to 25 kilometers. For launch, the carrier aircraft utilize aviation ejection launchers, specifically the AKU-410-1 or AKU-620 systems. I'll discuss the missile's operational principles later. The improved R-37M version retains the same length and diameter as the base version. One of the key upgrades is the advanced active radar seeker, the 9B1103M350 which improves target acquisition performance compared to the base model. It can lock onto targets in the terminal phase from a distance of up to 40 kilometers. The overall maximum engagement range remains 300 kilometers, and the warhead weight remains 60 kg. However, the missile's electronics have been significantly enhanced for better performance. The export version, RVVBD, is slightly shorter and lighter than the R-37M, measuring 4.06 meters in length and weighing 510 kg. Despite this, its warhead remains the same at 60 kg. The maximum engagement range is reduced to 200 km. Both versions share the same top speed of Mach 6. Carrier aircraft, including the MiG-31BM, Su-35S, and Su-57, can carry up to four R-37M missiles. Additionally, the Su-35SM is also capable of deploying this missile. How the R-37M missile works. The carrier aircraft's radar detects the target. The missile is ejected using a catapult launch system. The booster motor ignites, accelerating the missile. The cruise motor takes over, sustaining flight. Up to 100 kilometers, the missile can receive mid-course guidance updates from the launching aircraft via radio correction. Beyond this range, the missile relies on its inertial navigation system to continue toward the estimated target location. At around 40 kilometers, the active radar seeker begins searching for the target. Once the target is acquired, the missile adjusts its trajectory for the final engagement. After fuel depletion, the missile continues to glide, using control surfaces for final trajectory corrections. The biggest challenge when engaging maneuverable targets at extreme ranges like 300 kilometers is the missile's reliance on inertial guidance for a large portion of the flight. Since radio correction is only available up to 100 kilometers, if the target is beyond this distance, the missile must travel an additional 160 kilometers before its seeker activates. If the target is a highly maneuverable fighter, it can change position significantly during this time, potentially leaving the seeker's acquisition area before the missile arrives. This limitation is why the R-37M was primarily designed to engage large, slow-moving targets such as bombers and airborne early warning and control aircraft. These aircraft cannot evade as easily as fighters or attack aircraft, making them more vulnerable to the R-37M's long-range capabilities. However, against agile fighter jets, the missile's effectiveness decreases at maximum range. Yes, in 2023, the successful use of the R-37M missile by the Russian side against Ukrainian MiG-29 and Su-27 aircraft was confirmed. It was even recorded that the missile managed to hit a Ukrainian MiG-29 at a distance of approximately 213 kilometers, which became a significant event for such missiles and their application at such a long range in real combat conditions. 
As of today, no one can say with certainty what the success rate of the R-37M missile is. Much of its effectiveness depends on the radar capabilities of the carrier aircraft, its ability to detect and track targets at long distances, factors that vary between different aircraft, as well as the distance to the target itself, its size, and its maneuverability. It is a fact that the R-37M missile is considered one of the best in its class. Moreover, it has demonstrated its real capabilities in combat, further proving its effectiveness. There is a high probability that in the near future, the RVVBD will receive export orders, allowing other countries to acquire a long-range air-to-air missile capable of keeping enemy aircraft at a safe distance from strategic targets and foreign territories. Well, that was the R-37 missile. I'm sure this video was interesting and informative for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click like. That's all from me. Wishing you peaceful skies. Bye.